America's Evil Genius, Travis Cook here with you for just a brief video. Uh, I wanted to wait until my radio show on Tuesday to discuss this, but it's just such a big deal, a big story that uh, I don't know that I can wait that long. So we may talk about this more on my uh, radio show Tuesday, truthfrequencyradio.com, 90.7 FM in Denver, 97.3 FM in Eugene, Oregon, uh, 3 o'clock Eastern Time, uh, noon Pacific on Tuesday. But I'm recording this on Saturday afternoon, just a couple of hours after hearing the news, that Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia has passed away. And that is not an insignific insignificant thing at all. Um, first of all, obviously, you at a time like this, you give pause and respect and, and reflection to the life and the accomplishments and the achievements of someone who has been such a patriot and someone who has spent the better part of their life uh, standing up for our Constitution, standing up for what the Founding Fathers believed in their vision of what this, the greatest nation and the greatest culture on the face of God's green earth, uh, entails. And in that sense, you, you mourn, you are saddened, you reflect, and you also celebrate his life. Uh, a dedicated public servant who epitomized all that is the best in the judicial and political world. And it seems like that's getting harder and harder to find these days, but Antonin Scalia uh, certainly was emblematic of that as far as I'm concerned. As someone that if you were a, a budding lawyer, budding judge, budding legal mind, or even a budding politician that you should look to in terms of influence and, and uh, in terms of, of a guide for how the right way is to go about things. So certainly we're saddened in that respect and we pause and reflect and celebrate uh, a life well lived in, in that regard. At the same time, as uncomfortable as it is upon mourning and reflecting as we do, we also must then take a look at what happens next from a political and judicial perspective. And I know some of you out there are gonna find that very uncomfortable saying, hey, the, the body's not even cold yet, how dare you talk about politics? Well, hey, it's 2016, we live in an era where discussion and decisions are made at the speed of light. And uh, to take ourselves out of that process would, would do far more harm than good. So yeah, we've got to look at what comes next. And this, from a strictly judicial and political standpoint, is a horrific thing. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Antonin Scalia was someone who stood up for the Founding Fathers' vision of what this nation was supposed to be a constitutional originalist in terms of his rulings and his legal uh, background. And as we look at it, his seat has to be filled and it falls to Barack Obama to do that, to at least nominate people to do that, and of course to Congress to um, approve them or not. And I don't think that I'm speaking out of turn in assuming that Barack Obama will not replace Antonin Scalia with anyone remotely like him. And that's hugely problematic because if you look at the last few years, there have been so many five to four decisions on this Supreme Court on important cases. It seems almost like a rarity that we get a 6-3 decision, you know, and we don't think about it much, but truly if the Supreme Court were doing what they're supposed to do, if they were applying constitutional tests to all of the disputes, really you would think that most cases would be 9-0 or maybe an 8-1. You would think that a 5-4 case would be the exception, not the rule. But in this day and age, on some very important issues, uh, things go 5-4. You know, and it's not always on the conservative side. People say the conservatives have had an um, advantage on the court, and maybe that's nominally been so. But uh, we've seen a lot of cases where 5-4 rulings have gone against us and have gone against the originalist interpretation of the Constitution. We've seen rulings in favor of gay so-called marriage. We've seen rulings in favor of, of Obamacare. So the constitutionalist, the originalist grasp on the court has been tenuous at best already. And we know beyond any shadow of a doubt that Barack Obama will not appoint anyone to Phil Scalia's seat uh, who would keep that rather tenuous advantage in our favor. So what do we do? I mean, th this is huge, folks. This is, to me, this is going to be bigger, potentially, than even the presidential election that's coming up. Because let's face it, in modern times, 
the longest reaching decision that a president makes is who he puts on the Supreme Court. That has that has implications on America five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years even after that sitting president is out of office. Now that's not how our founding fathers intended it, but that's where we are in 2016. So this is, to paraphrase Joe Biden, after Obamacare passed, this is, pardon my French, a big fucking deal. So what do we do? Two things. Number one, for the rest of this year, now that we have the Republican majority in the House and Senate, even though they don't always act like it, for the rest of this year that Obama's in office, we must deny, we must not approve, we must stop any and every appointment to the Supreme Court that Obama attempts. We must stop him cold. It doesn't matter who he nominates. It doesn't matter what their accomplishments are. It doesn't matter what their background is. It doesn't matter what their resume looks like. It doesn't matter how they answer their questions in uh, the hearings that will come up. It does not matter how moderate they try to make themselves sound. We must stop each and every appointment that Obama tries to make to the Supreme Court for this next year. Stop them cold. If you thought we were obstructionists before, you ain't seen nothing yet if we're doing what we need to do here. We must not allow Barack Obama to successfully appoint someone to the Supreme Court. We must, as, as I used to say in basketball, put it in the icebox. Hold the ball and, and don't play. Wait out the clock. That's what we got to do. That's number one. Number two, we must make absolutely sure that a conservative wins the presidency in 2016. Notice that I'm not saying that a Republican wins in 2016. I'm saying that a conservative wins in 2016. You can look down the list, and there have been plenty of Supreme Court justices appointed by Republicans that have been horrific. John Roberts, who decided, had that deciding vote on Obamacare, he was appointed by a Republican. Sandra Day O'Connor, for the good that she brought, still was not an originalist in terms of a constitutional legal mind, she made some disastrous decisions. So just having a Republican appoint the nominee has been far, far from good in a lot of cases. It's not like every Republican goes out and finds another Clarence Thomas to put on the court. And that's what we need. We need nine Clarence Thomases, to be honest about it. So the key is to make sure a conservative gets elected to the Oval Office this time around. Now, this current Republican primary season has been entertaining. It's been interesting. It's been a lot of discussion. But now, at this point, with Scalia having passed, now is the time for us to circle our wagons around the conservatives. We've flirted with having moderates in the race and so on and so forth. And we've had Donald Trump out there claiming to be a conservative, and a lot of us aren't sure. And that we've seen back and forth about, is he really, is he not? Folks... I'm a Ted Cruz supporter, but I haven't been nearly as hard on Donald Trump as other Cruz supporters have been. And the reason is because the Cruz message or the, the Trump message has largely been a good conservative message, whether he believes it or not. And I've always thought that's been a good thing to have another person touting that message in the race. But if Donald Trump is the president, do you trust who he would appoint to the Supreme Court? Think about that. For a man who's had the positions that he's had, would you trust him to nominate someone to the Supreme Court? I'm not sure that I would. What about a John Kasich who's still somehow in this race? Would you trust him to nominate a rock rib conservative originalist to the Supreme Court? I wouldn't. Jeb Bush? No, I wouldn't trust him. Folks, the only one of the candidates right now that I would trust to nominate a Supreme Court justice is Ted Cruz. He's got a legal background. He's a lawyer himself. He's got a track record that proves he is a constitutionalist, originalist, a hardcore conservative, if there ever was one. And he would nominate justices that are in his mold. That's what we need. So if ever there is a time to rally around Ted Cruz, it is right now. Folks, I cannot overstate the importance of what has happened today. Because with all these 5-4 rulings, now if a liberal or even a moderate gets on the Supreme Court in Scalia's place... You've got to ask yourself what happens to very key areas in, in our nation. What happens to our gun rights? 
I mean, you've already had Hillary Clinton out there talking about how she disagrees with how the court has ruled on the Second Amendment up till now. Well, now she and Obama have an opportunity to put someone on their side in the court. What will happen to our ability to defend ourselves from criminals and murderers and rapists and Muslims and illegal aliens and urban thugs and even our own federal government? What will happen with a non-conservative taking that spot? We've seen what they've tried to do before. And you look at history, so much of what liberals push is not enacted by the ballot box. It's enacted by the court system. And we are on the verge now of a potential liberal taking Scalia's spot. And that will be, I'm telling you now, something even worse than the Earl Warren court was in the middle part of the 20th century. These are important times, folks. These are critical times. The, the survival of our nation, the survival of you and I, quite frankly, depend on it. That is not hyperbole, folks. We've already seen what liberals will try to do with gun rights, with illegal aliens, with religious freedom, trying to destroy it at every opportunity. And they've succeeded in some of that, even with a 5-4 court. My God, what will they do now? It is time to stop them at any and all costs. Anybody that Obama brings up. And it's time to put a conservative, not just a Republican, a conservative in the Oval Office to make sure that this rogue Supreme Court does not destroy our nation for good. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all for now. We will talk to you next Tuesday afternoon on truthfrequencyradio.com, 90.7 FM in Denver, 97.3 FM in Eugene, Oregon, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon on the West Coast. Until then, God bless America, Godspeed, and God save the Republic.